Very good afternoon. I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. And today we shall discuss about the compressor efficiency and then we shall start our discussion today on another aspect of the gas turbine units that is the multi stage compression with intercooling. So, in the last class we have established the mathematical expression of work done needed to be supplied to run the compressor following several processes and those processes are reversible adiabatic compression, reversible isothermal compression and a more generic process that is reversible polytropic compression. So, if we uh, write here that compression work following a reversible polytropic process, then this expression should be this n by n minus 1 then p 1 v 1 p 2 by p 1 to the power n minus 1 upon n minus 1. So, this is the expression of the work done needed to be supplied to the uh, compressor while the working fluid will be compressed following a reversible polytropic process. This negative sign as I said you that this is basically you know an indication of work input to the system following the notation that we could uh, write in the last class that work added to the system is negative work extracted from the system is positive. Now, today we shall you know discuss graphically you know that uh, if we try to map the compression processes in P V plane from a graphical representation of those processes, we also can estimate qualitatively about the compression work rather amount of compression work that would be needed to be supplied. So, if I write here So, this is P V plane and if we assume that the compression process between two pressure P equal to P 1 and this is P equal to P 2. So, this is these are the pressure limits and if we now consider the process is so, this is point 1, this is point 2 and then this is 3. So, 2 to 3 that is, so basically you know that from pressure P 2 to P 3 that is what is needed of the uh, process, we need to raise the pressure of the working fluid and if this is the uh, say this is P V power gamma equal to constant. So, this is the process. Now, if we consider the compression process is reversible isothermal. So, this is 4. So, this is we can write that 2 to 4 that is reversible isothermal compression and then what would be you know uh, 
reversible polytropic process. Then what would be the reversible polytropic process? Reversible polytropic process is in between these two and so this is 3 prime. So, 2 to 3 prime, so this is reversible polytropic compression. Now, question is from this PV plane we can easily see that work done that is certainly area under this uh, process curve. So, the work done if we now fix the pressure limit between. So, if we write here for the pressure limits that is P 1 and P 2. If the pressure limits are P 1 and P 2, then, then for gamma less than n less than 1, you know work done or work input to the compressor following reversible adiabatic process is greater than work input following reversible polytropic process which is greater than following reversible isothermal process. So, this is basically what we can see without going into the you know uh, mathematical calculation, but without going for the mathematical uh, calculation just from the graphical representation of the process lines in PV plane, we can assess certainly qualitatively about the work that we need to supply to the compressor for the compression process. Okay. Now, if we recall in the last class that also from here we can see that work so to be supplied to the compressor following a reversible isothermal process is certainly less as compared to the work needed for other two processes, work that should be supplied to the compressor following uh, other two processes. That means, if the process is reversible adiabatic process, compression process of course, then work amount of work to be supplied to the compressors is maximum. So, if the work input to the compressor is significantly small than the work required for the compression following reversible adiabatic process, then it would be more economical you know performance wise to have a reversible isothermal compression, because we had seen that a significant part of the turbine work output is consumed by the compressor for the compression process. Now, for the reversible isothermal compression as I discussed in the last class, it is very difficult to achieve and it is not of you know that much use in practice. And in a reversible isothermal compression, work done on the gas during the process is transformed into an increase in the internal energy. So, if we write the isothermal compression then we can write del w 
plus d u equal to del q right. Now, in the you know for the reversible compression process following isothermal compression the amount of work that is done on the gas certainly if the working fluid is air or any ideal, ideal gas that work solely I mean certainly we are supplying certain amount of energy in the form of work and that work done on the gas during the process will be transformed into an increase in the internal energy. That means, this del cube equal to del w plus u 2 minus u 1. So, 1 to 2, 1 to 2. Now, we know that for an ideal gas internal energy and enthalpy is function of temperature only. In fact, internal energy and enthalpy of an ideal gas is not function of volume and pressure as well. So, it is function dependence on temperature only. The process is isothermal compression. So, we are not allowing the temperature to be increased during the compression process of the working fluid. So, U equal to function of temperature only for an ideal gas and we can see that the temperature is remaining constant during the compression process. Hence, we can write this del q equal to del w. What does it mean? Because this fellow equal to 0 for reversible isothermal compression. Right. So, what we can understand that the amount of energy that is supplied to the compressor in the form of work for which rise in temperature will be there, but isothermal compression is not you know permitted to have an increase in the temperature of the working fluid. The sole purpose is to increase the pressure. So, what would be the case? Because we can see that del q amount will be there in the, because if you are supplying certain amount of work and that will give rise to certain amount of you know heating. So, that energy will be you know taken from the you know uh, gas by the uh, cooling. So, basically for isothermal compression the amount of energy you are supplying in the form of work and the rise in temperature is not permitted. Hence, this amount of energy will be taken from the working fluid by cooling. So, this is very important that isothermal compression sole purpose is to develop pressure only or raise pressure only. Okay. So, now let us discuss about the compression efficiencies. In one of the previous classes, we have talked about isentropic efficiency of the compression. As such, we had seen that degree of irreversibility that irreversibility is present with the compression process and it is because of that reason you know isentropic efficiency that is the actual work that should be supplied to the compressor for the compression of the working fluid would be more. Now, today we shall discuss about you know compression efficiency one is compressor efficiencies. So, the first one is you know adiabatic efficiency. So, eta 
compression adiabatic efficiency. What is this? You know this is very important that actual amount of work to be supplied actual work to be supplied to the compressor. And this is work input to the compressor following reversible adiabatic process. So, if we try to recall the T s plane T s plane. So, these are the pressure limits and this is 1, this is 2, but in reality you know the actual process should be this is 2 and this is 2 s. So, if we write here this is actually H 2 s minus H 1 divided by W actual. That means, if we apply steady flow energy equation across the compressor, then the work needed to be supplied for the compression process is H 2 s minus H 1 following isentropic process. So, this is eta compression adiabatic. Similarly, we can write eta compression isothermal. What would be this? Isothermal basically you know that it is again actual work to be supplied and work input to the compressor following reversible isothermal process right now if you recall today only we have discussed that work input following reversible isothermal process is lesser than the work input following reversible adiabatic process. So, if we assume that this is W isothermal divided by W actual, what we can say that eta since this is very less right. So, eta compression adiabatic is greater than eta compression isothermal. right now it is sometimes it is even greater than 1 eta compression adiabatic is greater than 1 so that is what we can see we shall discuss about another efficiency that is called volumetric efficiency of the compressor. So, you know that if we try to draw again the PV process in the PV plane, we are assuming say this is P equal to P 2 and this is P equal to P 1. So, this is this is two pressure these are these are two pressure limits and if we consider that work 
1 to 2 that is the suction or I should give name say this is A to B. So, this is A, this is B. A to B is suction and so this is the clearance volume V C and this is the swept volume V S. So, this is the swept volume V S. So, V C is the clearance volume and V S is the swept volume. So, this is basically if you co consider this is a reciprocating compression. Now, A to B is the suction stroke and then B to C is the compression process following a reversible adiabatic compression. Then C to D is the process which is discharging high pressure working fluid to the combustion chamber. So, let me tell you once again and then finally, again another process will start that is cycle will start and it will start from A to B. So, A to B is the suction, then B to C is the compression and C to D that is the process at which you know high pressure working fluid is discharged into the combustion chamber. Now, question is from this particular diagram we can define what would be the volumetric efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency is basically define eta volume ideally to try to understand that this is the swept volume. So, pressure is getting reduced from D to A inside the compressor. So, it is like expansion. So, piston is again coming down and then suction stroke starts. So, this is the swept volume. So, this is the piston displacement or swept volume. That, that means, this is the stroke and if the piston is now getting displaced from you know upper you know uh, between these two locations I should say. So, ideally it is because of this piston movement we are supposed to get a volume of air inside the cylinder which is equal to V s and that is the swept volume. So, again I am telling you process A to B is the suction stroke C B to C is the compression stroke when you know compression stroke ends then pressure you know that high pressure working fluid will be discharged into the combustion chamber and then when pressure is still at P 2 then finally, again there is an expansion because piston has to come to the you know another pressure. So, that is pressure inside the cylinder should be again suction pressure at P 1. So, essentially we are trying to have this is the swept volume ideally we are supposed to have volume of air that is equal to V s inside the cylinder but actual volume of air or any working fluid drawn into the cylinder drawn into the cylinder during suction stroke. 
So, this is the volumetric efficiency that means, ideally you are supposed to have this is V s this amount of or this volume of air inside the cylinder, but we are getting you know another amount of working fluid or air into the cylinder and the ratio of these two is known as volumetric efficiency. Certainly, actual volume of air that should be drawn into the cylinder during suction stroke is not equal to the piston displacement or swept volume. So, if we write it, so this is m dot into v 1 divided by v s, where m dot is mass flow rate of air or any other working fluid and v 1 is the specific volume of air or any other working fluid at compressor inlet. So, this is the definition of this volumetric efficiency. So, now question is I have drawn this PV diagram here only to establish another important relation between the geometrical configuration that is swept volume clearance volume of the compressor and the volumetric efficiency. So, this eta volume metric efficiency equal to m dot v 1 divided by v s right that we can see. And so, what is this basically you know that if we try to go back to the previous slide, this is the actual volume of you know air that should be drawn into the cylinder that is V V minus V A. So, this is V B, this is V A. So, V B minus V A that is the actual volume of air that should be drawn into the. So, this is V B minus V A divided by V S, right. So, V B minus V A divided by V S. Then, what is V B? V B is that is V S plus V C. So, we can write that equal to V C plus V S minus V A divided by V S. So, we can write here that equal to 1 plus V C by V S minus V A by V S. So, this V C by V S is this V C by V S that is known as clearance. So, this V C by V S basically the ratio of clearance volume to the swept volume is defined by another term that is called clearance C L and that is called clearance. So, if we write here that equal to 1 plus C L minus V A by V S. So, we have to relate this V A by V S in terms of the pressure ratio and then we can close the expression of this volumetric efficiency. So, if we go back to this you know that the pressure ratio is P 2 by P 1 right. So, what we can write from this expression is that V d by V a equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power gamma minus 1 upon gamma right. So, else what we can write you know if we assume that this process is P 50 to the power gamma equal to constant or more generic process if we assume that P 50 to the power n equal to constant then what we can write? We can write for the process d 2 a we can write P 2 we can write P 
पी टू भि डी टू दि पावर एन इक्वल टू पी ए दिस इज पी डी एंड पी डी इक्वल टू पी टू एंड पी एक्ल टू पी वन भि ए टू दि पावर एन देर फोर वी कैन रईट वन स्टेप फार्दार दैट इज पी टू भि डी टू दि पावर एन इक्वल टू पी वन भि ए टू दि पावर एन देर फोर वी कैन रईट यू नो भि ए बि डी दैट इज पी टू बै पी वन पावर वन अपन एन राइट दिस इज व्हाट यू कैन राइट नाउ व्हाट इज भि ए बि डी सो यू कैन सी भि ए इक्वल टू भि डी इक्वल टू भि एस भि डी इक्वल टू भि सी दैट इज द क्लियरेंस वॉल्यूम सो दैट मीन्स वी कैन राइट वन स्टेप फार्दर दैट भि ए बै भि डी इक्वल टू पी टू बै पी वन पावर वन अपन एन भि ए इक्वल टू भि ए डिवाइड बै भि सी इक्वल टू बिकज इफ उ गो बैक टू दि प्रिभिया स्लैड उन् सी भि डी इक्वल टू भि सी सो ह्वाट उ कैन डू भि ए इक्वल टू सो उ कैन रईट हियर दैट भि ए बै भि एस इक्वल टू भि डी बै भि एस पी टू बै पी वन पावर वन अपन एन एंड यू नो दैट उ नीड टू नो अबाउट दिस भि ए बै भि एस टू क्लोज दिस एक्सप्रेशन एंड हियर भि डी बै भि एस इक्वल टू भि सी बै भि एस इन टू पी टू बै पी वन पावर वन अपन एन बिकज भि डी इक्वल टू भि सी that is the clearance volume i should say this is clearance volume so this is v cl so this is v cl and if we go here then uh, i should write here that is v cl so v c l and v c l by v s that is c l so uh, next otherwise it will be confusing because i have also used the you know point c here so next what we can do v d equal to v c l so that is this is c l into p 2 by p 1 power 1 upon n so what we can do we can next write that volumetric efficiency volumetric efficiency volumetric efficiency it a volume equal to 1 plus cl minus cl into p2 by p1 power 1 upon n so you understand that volumetric efficiency will be reduced if we need more rp pressure ratio so that means if we need to raise high pressure of the working fluid then volumetric efficiency will reduce what are the possible reason behind it possible you know uh, reason behind it are or i should say the possible reason behind it is the leakage because if we need to raise high pressure of the working fluid through the compression process certainly leakage of the working fluid will be there and hence it will eventually reduce the uh, it will eventually reduce the volumetric efficiency okay so with this now let us discuss about the important part of this unit is called multi stage compression and intercooling so basically if we need to go for multi staging of the compression process 
intercooling is needed. So, let me tell you one thing why we need to go for multi staging. First of all, if we try to recall in the compression process, the sole purpose is to raise the pressure with an appreciable increase in density as well as you know increase in temperature as well. So, basically you know that if we need to increase the pressure as well as temperature when we need to supply compressed air promptly to any combustion chamber for that we need to go for multi staging compression. I shall be discussing today why we need to go for multi staging and if we need to go for multi staging intercooling is very much essential. So, these two you know this coupled keywords multi stage compression and this is coupled keyword and intercooling these two are basically you know uh, directly related. If we need to go for multi staging compression we need to go for intercooling. Now, as we have discussed that if the compression process is only to in compression process is needed only to increase the pressure of the working fluid with no increase in temperature then multi staging uh, you know may not be required, but it is very you know unlikely that we will be having a compression process wherein sole purpose will be to increase substantial amount of pressure without increasing temperature. Otherwise, isothermal compression will not be uh, possible. So, if we need to increase the pressure, so if we go back to the previous slide, we can see. Uh, that if we need to increase pressure from P 1 to P 2, then we can understand that pressure ratio R P that we could define in the last class. So, for such a increase in high pressure, if the requirement is only to not only to increase pressure, but also to increase temperature, you know temperature of the working fluid at the end of the compression will be so high that that temperature will be having some detrimental effects for the mechanical component of the compressor. Now, that is one thing. Second thing you know that that means, multi staging is needed if we need to increase the pressure of the working fluid substantially, then instead of a single stage compression, we need to go for multi stage compression. Why? Because multi staging compression would provide a few distinctive advantageous feature. So, basically if I write it will reduce the work of compression whatever I am, I am writing here those points I am writing here in comp basically these are basic these are advantageous features and these features will be very very important to ensure when there is a there will be a compression process and the sole purpose of the compression process will be to increase a substantial increase in pressure. Now, we also can increase that pressure using a single compression or single single stage compression, but if we perform a single stage compression to develop such a high pressure, then whatever points I am writing here all these advantageous features will not be there. So, that means, the work of compression will be more. So, the compression work would be more. But if we use multi stage compression, then that multi staging reduce the work of compression. Number 2. So, all these are if I write here multi stage compression, then let me write here quickly, then coefficient of performance increases 
3, you know few minutes back I said here that sometimes adiabatic compression efficiency becomes higher greater than 1. Efficiency cannot be greater than 1, then we need to define coefficient of performance. So, the coefficient of performance will be more if we use multi stage compression, but again I am telling you, you have to be you know very careful that all these points we are trying to compare, all these points we are writing here, we are discussing here, only when we are comparing the compression process that is multi stage compression vis a vis single stage compression. If we need to increase a substantial pressure of the working fluid, then if we go for single stage compression, all these favorable aspects or advantageous features will not be there. COP increase and then leakage past the piston or leakages past the pistons, piston are reduced or and number 4 volumetric efficiency increases. Of course, eta volumetric compression so so this is what we can see so this volumetric efficiency will increase now next point is point 5 that is size of the cylinder can be optimized. So, size of the cylinder can be optimized. So, see few minutes back we have discussed that volumetric efficiency is function of pressure ratio. If this pressure ratio R p equal to p 2 by p 1 is very high, then volumetric efficiency will reduce, but if we use instead you know the multi stage compression, then volumetric efficiency will increase, otherwise it will reduce. Again I am telling we need higher compression ratio that is p to be more. Okay. So, now question is for this multi stage compression again as we have discussed that the sole objective is to increase high pressure of the working fluid with an appreciable increase in temperature. Even we need to go for multi stage compression an important aspect of the multi stage compression is to use an intercooler. Why? Because if you know as I said you that at the end of the compression process not only the pressure, pressure will certainly increase, but along with the pressure temperature of the working fluid also will increase and if the temperature increases beyond a threshold value that you know high pressure and high temperature working fluid in particularly high temperature working fluid will be having detrimental effect on the mechanical component of the compressor. Second thing it is easier to compress you know heavier cold air or any other gas rather than hot air. 
So, accounting for this intercooler is placed between two compressors if we need to go for multi stage compression. So, I am writing here intercooler intercooler its main function are number 1 to reduce temperature of the working fluid before it enters the next stage of compressor. Right? Actually, if we need multi stage compression, the working fluid that comes out from the first stage or first compressor will be having high pressure and high temperature. Ideally, inlet condition of the inlet temperature to be precise, not only pressure, but inlet temperature of the working fluid of this, you know, at the or temperature of the working fluid at the inlet of the second compressor ideally should be equal to you know very low and as close as the ambient temperature. But for that this intercooler is used. So, I am writing here you know that uh, uh, for the compression in the second stage ideally air or working fluid temperature should be as close as to the ambient air temperature. as possible. It is very difficult to bring the temperature of the working fluid close to the I mean equal to the ambient temperature, but our objective should be to bring or to reduce the temperature of the working fluid before it enters into the second stage of compression closer to the ambient temperature. So, this is why intercooling or intercoolers are placed. And second thing you know that uh, as I said you that it is very easier to compress hot, it is easier to compress cold heavier air than hot air and if temperature increases, temperature will certainly increase and if temperature increases beyond a threshold value then uh, that high temperature will be very much you know difficult to handle by several mechanical components those that they are in inside the compression. Okay. So, with this now let us just schematically discuss schematically you know that uh, about this inter intercooling effect. So, I am writing here intercooling effect. So, if we consider so this is air is coming, then air is taken to another mechanical component, then that air is taken to another compressor. So, and that air 
So, basically you know that is air intake. So, this is low pressure uh, cylinder, this is high pressure cylinder and so the air is first taken into this low pressure cylinder, it is now compressed and that air which is you know coming out from the low pressure cylinder is now taken in this intercooler. So, this is intercooler and inside the intercooler that air releases it, but we need to maintain that pressure will be equal to either the low pressure cylinder or a pressure which is in between these two cylinder pressures. So, we will be discussing today on that aspect and then that air is again taken to high pressure cylinder and again further compressed. So, this is basically you know cold air and finally, that discharged air is discharged and this discharged air at delivery pressure. Okay. So, now question is we need to reduce the temperature of the air before it enters into the second stage of turbine. As I said you few minutes back, what is done here you know that here cold water is allowed to pass through this intercooler and taking water this is hot water. So, basically you know that air releases heat to this water stream, water temperature increases by releasing heat we can reduce the temperature of air before it enters into the cylinder second cylinder or second compression. As I said you ideally it should be you know very much uh, you know favorable for the compression process of course, if we can reduce the temperature of the air as close as to the ambient temperature, but it is not really possible, but we need to reduce the temperature and finally, the air will be again compressed and it would be discharged at the delivery point. Now, as I said you that this cooling should takes place at a pressure which at least should be the pressure at which the uh, which should be at least at a pressure and that pressure is developed by the first cylinder or it should be in between a pressure which is in between the pressure uh, developed by the first cylinder and pressure that would be developed by the second cylinder. So, that would be an intermediate pressure stage. So, this is basically you know the intercooling effect. Now, if we try to map the processes in PV plane. So, if we try to map the processes in PV plane, then we can see that. So, this is P equal to P 1, this is pressure, this is volume and say this is P equal to P 2. So, we need to increase pressure of the working fluid from P 1 to P 2. There is one case that if we use a single stage compression, then we certainly can develop the pressure from here. So, this is 2 say this is 0.1 and this is 3 and 2 to 3 say this is P to the power n equal to constant. Okay. Now, if we increase the pressure using a single stage those problematic issues will be there reduction in volumetric efficiency, reduction in COP, work input will be more and the rise in temperature at the end of the compression process should be so high that the rise of the, rise of the 
uh, you know that high temperature of the working fluid should have or will have detrimental effect on the mechanical components of the compressor. What is done here? Now, say for example, now if we it is compressed in the first cylinder up to an intermediate pressure, say this is the intermediate pressure you know 3 prime and then it is so process 2 to 3 prime that is basically compression in low pressure cylinder and this is compression you know single stretch cylinder or compressor single stretch compressor then what is done 3 prime to 4 so this is 4 that is delivery of compressed air in low pressure so this is delivery of compressed air or any other working fluid at low pressure right or in the low pressure. So, it is this is in low pressure. Then finally, again we should be having another process that is 4 to 5 and say this is the point and this is 0.5. So, 4 to 5 that is basically you know rejection of heat at uh, intercooler and then 5 to 6 that would be you know compression at high pressure cylinder this is compression in the high pressure cylinder right so now these are the processes and finally 6 to 7 that is delivery of delivery of compressed air delivery of compressed air. So, what we can understand from this particular diagram is that this is the amount of work which we do not require because of this multi stage compression. So, we are allowing compression process from 2 to 3 prime in low, low, low pressure stage compression, compressor, then 3 to 4 that is basically you know a 3 prime to 4 that is delivery of compressed air or working fluid in low pressure, then 4 to 5 is essentially again release of heat from the compressed air to the you know uh, another fluid inside the intercooler and finally, 5 to 6 that is again rise in pressure of the working fluid in a high pressure stress uh, compressor. So, had we performed the compression process by using a single stage compressor certainly the pressure at the end of the compression would have been P 3 or P 2 P 2. So, our objective is to rise the pressure from P 1 to P 2. So, there are two possibilities one is that we can use a, we can use a single stage compressor and the pressure will increase from P 1 to P 2 following this process 2 to 3. In another case what we are doing 
we are using multi stage compression, we are developing pressure from 2 to 3 prime first, then by having certain another mechanical arrangements, we are developing pressure from again intermediate pressure to the final pressure, but in that case what we are doing we are saving this much amount of work. So, this is saved work. due to multi stage arrangement right had not we you know performed the compression process by using multi stage compression we would have you know certainly got pressure at the end of the compression that is P 2, but in that case this much amount of additional work would have been needed to be you know supplied to the compression. So, this much amount of additional work would have been needed had we perform the compression process by using a single stage compressor but what we can do now we can save this much amount of work because of this multi staging arrangement but mind it for this multi staging arrangement we can save this much amount of work that is true that will certainly increase the cycle efficiency but what is most important that you know we need to have an important mechanical component or mechanical arrangement that is intercooler so what we need to do we need to supply again on coolant that will take a certain amount of energy from the flowing gas or air or any other working fluid. To have such an arrangement the system will be bulky and for that both you know operational cost as well as maintenance cost would be there. Second thing it is because of this you know reduction in temperature of this working fluid inside the intercooler though we are getting you know certain amount of benefit in terms of work needed to be supplied to the compressor and that is this much amount, but what will happen you know the amount of energy that should be added to the system because the cycle efficiency is you know net work output by net energy input. So, what will happen you know instead of having an increase in the cycle efficiency eventual impact would be a reduction in cycle efficiency. So, multi stage compression with intercooling is needed because we need to run the unit for a long time and for that we need to ensure that even if we need to compromise with the cycle efficiency, but at least we can run the unit without inviting additional problems like failure of mechanical component because of the rise in temperature and many thing others. So, to summarize today's discussion we have discussed about the compression processes and work needed to be supplied to the compressor for the compression process following you know reversible adiabatic, reversible isothermal and reversible polytropic processes. Then we have discussed about several efficiencies of the compression process. Finally, we have discussed about we have discussed about the requirement of multi stage compression and for the multi stage compression we had seen that intercooling is very much essential and if we need to go for multi stage compression certainly intercooling will be there but this arrangement eventually reduces the cycle efficiency we stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class thank you mm -hmm.